this is Nicolette from Nicolette Styles and also the creator of the Clever with Canva course. And today I'd like to share with you how to use mock-up in Canva to promote your upcoming offers or blog posts or content upgrade that you have. Firstly, let's talk about what you can use product mockups for. As you can see, you can use them to portray current things that you're working on, templates, mood boards, checklists. You can even use them if you're using a computer desktop to illustrate a sales page or a membership site or a website. And you can also use them to promote an ebook. So here's also an example of how I used this ebook template in one of my previous sales pages. I'll just zoom in real quick so you can get a better idea of that. So there's definitely a lot of uses for mockups in your business. So let's talk about three different areas where you can get mockups. Number one is creative market. So creative market is going to have a whole host of different things. So search computer mockup. You can get very specific in your search. It's going to depend what it is that you're looking for. So if you know that you're looking for a Mac screen, then you might enter Mac screen with pink or blue on wooden top. See how specific you can get. You want to make sure that you're keeping this on brand for your business. You can also find your images on Etsy. So you can go to etsy.com and find mockups there. And another one of my favorite resources is Hot Chocolate. Let's talk about the different types. There are computer mockups, laptop mockups, there's phone mockups, and also tablet mockups. So there's definitely a lot of different options. The next thing that I want you to think about is to actually grab an iPad and I don't know if you can see but if you have a look on your iPad you'll see that it looks like there's a black border right around both your phone and your tablets are going to have that it looks like a black border, but it's, it isn't really. I think it's just the sides of the screen. That's something to keep in mind to make your visuals look more legit. So let's jump into Canva and I'm going to show you exactly how to use Canva for your mockups. So most of the time you're going to create your image for a specific dimension. If you know what that dimension is, you'll go use custom dimension. You'll add that in here and you'll create that design on those dimensions. Um, if you're creating it for a blog post, you'll use this preset design here. And most of the time, if I'm not sure, I just use the presentation option. So let's click on the presentation option. And in here, you can see that I've pasted in a mood board and you'll see that there is that small black border that I mentioned. Now, just a tip that I want to give you. This specific mock-up was a little bit more difficult to create because this leaf falls right in there. But because we need to calculate for that border anyway, it worked out pretty well. When you buy your product mock-ups, make sure that you're not buying something where the imagery is completely over your image. It's timely and difficult and you're going to need to use a cropper um, to make this work for you. You can do it in InDesign and Photoshop, but we're using Canva so that we can save time and create graphics faster. Let's get started. What I recommend you do is you can do one of two things. Number one is you're going to have an image that you are going to want to put in there. So whether this is a Pinterest image or an ebook cover or maybe a checklist, those kinds of things you will have created already in a Canva document. So you will import those into Canva. You want to make sure that you prepare your graphic ahead of time so that it's easy for you to create your mock-up. Let's use this one over here. What I like to do is zoom in as much as possible. And then we're going to resize this and we're going to use this rotating tool to get it just right. So in Canva to zoom in and out, you're going to zoom out on the right bottom corner where it says zoom 
uh, plus and minus and you can also click on the center and have it fill or fit. So now what I do is I just try and get it just right. So that feels pretty good um, rotation wise and now what I do is I spread it out. So you'll see that it does go over a little but that's okay. Keep spreading it out. This is more or less what you want to create. It's just that very thin black border from the iPad. And so to compensate for this part that's over, I double click on it and it's going to bring over a box to crop this image. So now you need to decide which side of your image you want to crop. Now because I don't want to crop a lot of this leaf over here, I'm going to crop the left hand side a tad more. And I work section for section. Um, I'm going to crop a smaller section than a bigger section because I can always go back and crop more. I'm going to spread this out and crop again. Now that being said, you also want to make sure that your visual looks balanced. So sometimes you are going to have to take it in a little bit on both ends. It does take a little bit longer, but I feel like this is something that is worth the effort because you want this to look just right. Sometimes when you use canvas cropping tool it does get stuck a little bit so sometimes I just close it and go back in. Okay so we're getting a little closer. Um, now I need to crop the bottom a little bit more. And the, one of the reasons I like to zoom in is because you're kind of under a microscope and you can see those fine lines a whole lot more. So nobody is probably going to look at this quite like you. Most people don't really care if it has a border. They don't look at images like you do, but we want this to look really good. So let's zoom out and I think that looks fine. So that's what you're going to do. Um, you're going to do something similar if you've got a checklist or other images. And now if you've got something that is horizontal like this. So let's say we've got a website page that we want to promote you can go and you can take a screenshot of it so I'm actually going to jump to my website I think it's going to make a bigger visual difference and so I hit command shift and 4 on my MacBook iMac um, and I take a screenshot um, I take a few different options because you're going to see later that you might have to go wider, crop wider, and just crop the ends. Okay, so we go back into Canva and then we upload those screenshots. Now in Canva, when you're uploading, there's going to be a progress bar. And when this guy, see how it fills up once it's at the top, that's how you're going to know when something is completely important, imported into Canva. Sometimes if that is still busy importing, you're not going to be able to um, download your image. What I sometimes do if I feel like those images have imported is I press save and refresh the page. Okay, so I'm going to go for the wider option first and I'm going to zoom in. A computer screen is quite interesting because most of the time when you look on a computer screen, if you see mine, you can see all my little widgets at the bottom as realistic but we try and make it look as realistic as possible okay and then sometimes what you can do is just push it to the side a little bit just to get that bottom just in line with where you want to crop it so there's one one way and see this is what you want to try and avoid see how this image and the line here of the green, they're not in line. So you can see that it isn't done very well. If it's easier for you, pretend that there is or that you do want to leave an imaginary white line for the computer desktops and make them a tad smaller so that that doesn't happen. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And it just takes practice. Once you've been doing a few of these, you'll find that you get a whole lot better. So that is how you do a screenshot. And we've talked about how to import a design that you've already done. And so if you are doing this for a computer screen, you'll do exactly the same. I'll just resize. Um, on a laptop, there is that border too. So remember, you just want to try and keep things as realistic as possible. And if you can't remember, 
then have a look at your tablet or your computer um, to see what it looks like. So just to wrap up, remember to zoom in when you're in Canva and working on your mock-up so that you can have an advantage about exactly where you're placing your graphics. Then you want to make sure that you're leaving a bit of a border where applicable. Remember to use the dimensions. So the reason why this is important is you'll see that this image over here, I created for a different dimension for my blog. So this is not going to work in this presentation unless I intended to resize it like this. And then the last tip that I want to give you is to try before you buy. So you'll see over here what I've done is I've just taken a screenshot. So when you're in Creative Market, you first want to see if the mock-up that you're wanting to purchase is the one that will fit with your branding and with your vision. So go Command Shift 4 again to take a screenshot of that um, and then first test it out to see if it will work with your image and if it'll work in the particular place that you want to use it. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below and I'll check back in with you again soon. Bye.